then I remember the whole reason and the whole way I got here and my career path itself. And I want to be real. I want to talk about things that scare you about freelancing, that scare you about job hunting, that scare you about creativity. Hi everybody, it's Alex. Welcome to Guiding Creatives, the community for creatives, freelancers, the multi-passionate. Anybody who wants to get involved in a creative career, maybe it's a side gig, maybe you're just looking to lean into some hobbies, volunteer, anything that sparks your creative interest, there's something here for you. Today we're actually going to be a little bit more conversational because there's been a lot of talk about layoffs and it brings up something that is always in front of your face. Whether you're freelancing or you're working for like a contract in a creative career, because I'm not saying everybody who is a creative needs to work for themselves or freelance. Some people go into a creative career and they're looking for a long-term relationship. All too often, and this is what I don't want to be. All too often people will get on here and talk about how freelancing is like the key to financial freedom or creativity is the key to financial freedom and you won't ever have to worry about money and all this. Although there is some truth to that, it's not the whole truth. It's a very big risk. Any career path is a risk. The risk is different for each career path, but we all too often confuse contract work or getting like a full job offer with job security, which it should be, but it's not all the time. And then we push away chasing our dreams or chasing creativity or chasing freelancing because it could be some instability or fluctuations in your income, some uncertainty, things like that. Obviously there's a case to make for both, but we're gonna talk about some recent layoff news and I'm just gonna give my piece and my experience and how you can use freelancing to elevate some of the stress of layoffs and job security. A person named Brittany posted on social media and shared her getting laid off by Cloudflare. There's a lot of debate online about like the professionalism of recording it. I wanna stop that in its tracks right now. There are so many things that people tell you is professional and not professional and it has nothing to do with respect it's about them protecting themselves it's about them having control and it's about them being able to make you look bad if you ever defy them i do not believe in that nonsense you're not showing this person's face you're not sharing super private information this is about you you are showing the truth of the situation and some people don't like that just because you're showing the ugly truth of a situation doesn't mean you're acting unprofessional. So let's get that clear. But the big thing in this story was they were citing performance, like they were really teetering around why they were laying this person off. And it's just so rude. It's disrespectful and it just makes your blood boil. She kept her composure really well. It's really hard to do that in this situation because you're talking about your livelihood you know, when we lose a job, obviously, yes, you can go find another one. It's easy enough to say that. It doesn't matter if it takes you a week or a year. When you start a new job, usually they hold pay for a couple of weeks. Like, there is such a gap. And with the living situation that almost everybody's in right now, you cannot afford that gap. So, to bring somebody in and say, you know, you're going to have to struggle for the next little while... And it's your fault, but we are not going to tell you why. If you can't come with receipts, if you can't come with numbers, and the funny thing is, even if they would have done that in this period, she was on like a scale up um, probationary period. So to track performance and to say lack of, there should be a very big indicator. Like if she's actually not hitting deadlines, if she's not showing up on time, if she's doing something that is actually not good <laughs> that would have been very clear and spoke about so clearly they're just reaching they should have owned up and like she said she was like if you just overhired and need to lay off say that she with her chest was like just admit to it and as a business owner as i start to grow i'm starting to realize how it's the easy way out to really lean into it's just business or it's this it's that instead of being really transparent and honest, people just wanna make money. They don't care about the community they keep. They don't care about the people. They don't care about the environment they're fostering, which they'll all say they will. They'll have those pizza parties. They'll have those meetings about how you're a team and a family, but they don't treat you like it. Because at the end of the day, when they need to make a profit, if you're the obstacle, they're going to drop you. And that's why job security is such a false sense of hope. Unless you have written in a contract that if they lay you off or fire you or whatever, they have to pay you so much or there's some kind of financial stability, that's the only time you have job security. Because the second they decide they don't need you, 
they can break the contract. Often you'll get a contract that will say you need to give so much notice and for them, they don't have to give notice at all. You have to understand, it doesn't matter how much you pour your heart and soul, the relationships you make, when profit is concerned or reputation, they will drop you in a second. I worked at a very big company where people gave so much of their life, their health, their mental health, they gave all of this to this company. They were with them for years and years and years. They just had children. They were building their families. They had this, you know, five-year plan of where they were going to grow. Profits started to change. And I want to make clear, often profits are not even changing to the point where it's detrimental to the company because a lot of companies don't need all these profits. You do not need to make more every quarter. You can make a goal that means you are in the money but still supporting your team, but that never happens. They want to chase the higher and higher and higher growth at the expense of you. I hate that we do business that way, and that's why I'm really trying to resist any kind of traditional working mindset. And obviously, it's hard because as you're building a business, you have to play the games, you have to do the things, but you do always have a choice. And I'm faced with that more and more every day. The choices I make speak to the company and community I'm going to build, and it's easy, it's easy to build it off profit and exploitation. At some points, you have to understand that yes, businesses need to make a profit, businesses need to make money to keep you employed, but you're lying to yourself if you think the CEO needs a bonus every year, okay? I get that you created the business. Anybody who runs a business knows to make it super successful and like global and scale up, you cannot do it completely alone. Okay, I work with video editors. I work with caption writers. I work with people. I'm not doing everything by myself. Yes, is a lot of it my knowledge and my value? Sure. But I would not be able to scale by myself. And the value of scaling your business, the value of getting where you are people think you should just keep rewarding the CEO for that. It's so, it's just so ignorant. That was a little bit of a rant. I'm coming back down. But I've also seen that Google is doing a massive round of layoffs. They've been just laying off people left, right, and center. I saw Sports Illustrated laid off a bunch of people because they had new management and it was just a mess. You are not secure. So if that's what's stopping you from freelancing... I think you need to be honest with yourself and that's where I want to transition this discussion and talk about, okay, so why and how can freelancing not necessarily give you more security or benefits, but how can it give you a little bit more control? So what I want to say is freelancing has been a stable source of income for me for a few years now. Like a few years, I'm making a stable income, even with the cost of living rising. I'm not making a huge profit right now because of the cost of living rising and because I am one person and I can only do so much with 24 hours in a day, like all the CEOs, but I've been making a stable income. Has it fluctuated? Has it been terrifying? Yes, but I'm doing it. And I'm not saying you need to quit your job. I'm not saying that you need to freelance full time, but... If you have a skill, if you have something to offer, if you have experience from the job you're working in, the job you might be staying in, or the job that just laid you off, how can you take that skill and just start, you know, maybe doing some part-time work? You could literally do one project a week, one small project a month, whatever is your capacity, you could be doing that to build up a reputation, to build up some clients, to build up this little bit of income So if things did go south, you have the foundation and you can start focusing on scaling. And that's what I want to stress here. The two hardest, hardest things I found with freelancing is one, getting started, and two, scaling. Those were the two biggest things because you have to just get started. And once you get started, you're doing the thing. But to make it profitable or make it stable or make it secure, you really need to scale. But the thing is, if you wait until you're laid off, which is when you need to scale, you're going to find yourself in this trap of trying to build something that you have a little bit of control over, depending on 
other companies and businesses to hire you. It's just going to be more stressful. And I don't want you to find yourself completely stuck because there's no worse feeling. I'm not saying freelancing is going to make you the same pay as a job you might have. I'm not saying that it's going to be enough for you to do long term. I'm saying to have even a glimmer of a chance to make a little bit of money that week, that day, makes a huge difference. Because the thing about getting another job is there's a transitionary period. And I always just want to stress to you to have something, something in your back pocket. It could be dog walking. It could be maybe you used to do nails and now you're going to do nails again. You can find these little jobs. It doesn't have to be freelancing either. It can be gig economy jobs or it can be just like casual jobs, which is technically kind of a gig economy job because you're working like when needed. But I just want you to find something and build something for yourself, even if it is small, even if you never use it, to have a few client reviews, testimonials, case studies, portfolio, examples. When you find yourself in a situation where you could really just use something, you have that little bit of control over, I know I can do this. I've made a bit of money with it before. I have everything I need. So how do I scale? Don't wait to start when you're laid off. Wait to scale for when you're laid off. And I know you don't have all the time in the world, but you don't need it, okay? One job a month, start now. You might not get laid off for ever. You might not get laid off for a year. You might not get laid off for a couple months, but you will have something to show for it. You'll have something built up. And I guess you would have to check if for some reason you're forbidden from offering certain services, like a non-compete. There shouldn't be that much limitation that you can't find anything. And I will say even for me, if, if you've listened to any of my podcasts before, I'm sure I've said it, I walk dogs also on top of freelancing, on top of having a business, and that all just kind of complements each other. So if I ever need an extra bit of money, it's there for me. Sometimes I'm unsure if I want to post this kind of stuff on Guiding Kratos and really get opinionated. Then I remember the whole reason and the whole way I got here and my career path itself. And I want to be real. I want to talk about things that scare you about freelancing, that scare you about job hunting, that scare you about creativity. And I want to give you my two cents, my experience, and then also offer some kind of solution, whether that just be a glimmer of hope or it be something actionable. So if you have any thoughts, feel free to leave it below. I know the discussion of professionalism is not always in agreement with me and I don't really care. I'm never going to change my perspective on that. Professionalism boils down to respect. And if you can't give somebody respect, but you think you're being the professional one, we're losing the plot. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much and stay creative. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comments and next week we'll go back to a little bit more of a structured episode. See you next week.